women in Somali politics have started to take on more significant roles. Health Minister Fazia Nur has been an important leader in fighting the coronavirus. Halima Ibrahim has faced tough challenges in running the National Independent Election Commission. Women make up just a little less than 50% of Somalia's population, but currently have only 24% of the seats in the legislature. The upcoming election, due before the end of July, is supposed to change that, but will it? There hasn't actually been a lot of clarity in terms of how this will play out. You know, 30% is, is the ideal um, it, but quota for, for the women at a minimum, um, but that was the same in 2017. And they didn't quite reach it, so they got to around 24%. Uh, but there was a lot of effort in 2017 around this. Um, that there was these women ambassadors that were really championing it. This is an issue the international community jumped on. They got the buy-in of, of President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and, and some other big leaders. So there was a lot of kind of rallying around this. Hodan Ali is a senior advisor to the Benadir governor and the co-founder of Lead Now, an organization aimed at empowering women in Somalia. Women continue to suffer from the lack of political representation in critical government sectors, especially parliament, with rampant abuses and neglect of women's issues and proposals of violent laws that impede on the human rights of women and children. Without just representation for women, there will be further erosions in democracy and human rights as our governance structures fail to represent the voices of so many women and their respective intersections. So how could the 30% threshold be achieved this time? Well, because each seat of parliament is assigned to a particular sub-clan, there is inevitably going to be some sort of, um, you know, almost compromises um, or kind of trading but between the sub-clans. You know, certain sub-clans put up a female candidate last time, they're going to feel this time around, you know, maybe they don't want to and, and whatnot. So I think there, there, there could be a way where, you know, you assign some of these specific seats to say these are women-only seats. You know, only women can, can compete in that election because if you have, you know, women competing against, against uh, men, you know, for, they're going to be at a disadvantage. There hasn't been much public debate over the issue and no female leaders have risen to prominence to put forward fresh ideas although there has been one floated. Another way to do it, uh, another idea that's been thrown out is to say, well, we'll do the 30% seats for women first. Um, and that way we ensure that, that that quota is met and then we'll move on to the rest of the process. You know, so it almost kind of blocks it until, until you, you achieve it. Hodan is calling for international partners to put pressure on Somali politicians to achieve the promised threshold. Somalia is heavily supported by international partners and dollars from the international community. I am a dual citizen and I pay my taxes toward the UN mission to Somalia. I then am able to ask how my Canadian taxpayer money is being used in improving the lives of women in Somalia. She laments that even reaching 30% may not let women really have their voices heard. Traditionally, it has been forced upon male politicians to create space for women that makes it a sort of tokenism. Unfortunately, it does not really create a genuine space where women can come and have their voices evaluated, challenged, and accepted in the same way as men. The recent vote in Somaliland certainly doesn't give comfort to women in Somalia. If there's, there's a lesson from um, Somaliland's recent parliamentary elections, which, you know, by all accounts went off pretty well, uh, there were no women elected to, to, to the parliament. So I, I think that shows, you know, unless there's a very, you know, um, I guess, very specific process behind this and some enforcement with that, you know, I don't think you can expect um, getting that, that quota be achieved. While the outcome is far from decided, strong women like Hodan Ali will keep pushing for inclusion. And maybe Somalia might surprise everyone this election cycle with some new female faces in government. 
Tune in to ADN TV tomorrow when we look at potential security arrangements and problems during Somalia's vote.